Dr. Ibrahim Afi'i was for me like uh, a very positive person who is giving uh, positive energy to everybody around him. And I cried. <laughs> it, was, it was a big surprise for me that I will never ever forget. And after about um, two, two years, uh, uh, he died. So learned from is uh, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. Um, this man has um, has a vision, has a, a different way of thinking. Uh, I would like to mention that a few days before I come to my lovely country, so I have been two years now trying to get out my project from Sharjah Education Zone to the UAE and then to my country and then all the Arab worlds and then the whole world. Yeah. Even here or there, even in the UAE, we're still uh, doing our effort to find a sponsor. But I know and I believe it will happen, not for me, but for those children. It will definitely happen one day. The results are very quick, so you don't have to train them a lot like the normal instruments. You just get very quick results, very neat results also. Luckily, I have the, in the project very rare um, disabilities um, that I... Sometimes I did not hear about them before, like Bruginia syndrome. Um, Marwa is a very special, uh, lovely girl in my project. We have a very lovely story together. Uh, mm -hmm. She is a very, very lovely um, personality. She loves music and she loves playing music. And especially with my team also, because I'm not seeing them every day. But the, te the music teachers, my team, they see them every day in the school. Hello and welcome to a new episode of Story of Success in which we interview successful Egyptian figures. We'll be back after the break, so stay with us. I'll be continuing my interview with a unique lady. Actually, she specialized in the field of helping children with special needs. And as I mentioned in the past episode, she was awarded many awards for her efforts, especially in the field of integrating special needs children in regular schools that she was awarded a lot of awards, including the Khalifa and the Hamdan awards from the United Arab Emirates. She's been living in the Emirates for 22 years now, and she's been working in that field since 2009. Now let's continue together my interview with her and she is special needs specialist Hanan El -Attar. Well Mrs. Hanan welcome with us. Welcome to you. Thank you. Now you've mentioned that you also encourage the parents now this is a topic that we haven't discussed we've been yes. always talking about dealing with the children now how do you deal with the parents and do you sometimes find uh, parents who are disappointed with the condition of their child yes of course um, actually many of them uh, in the beginning um, I used to see the surprise on the parents uh, w once I remembered that I uh, I had a phone call with a parent 
with a child who has a mental retardment. Uh, it was a kind of a competition uh, between the students for playing music and I was the judge. And after he finished playing, uh, the teacher called his mom and uh, I spoke to her. I told her, your, uh, your son has played very lovely and he's promoted to a higher standard to, for the competition. And she was definitely like shocked. She said, my son? I said, yes. She said, he plays music? I said, yes. She said, I can't believe he, he does nothing at home. He, he has a problem with, with his mind. He was, she was still not sure that I'm talking about this, this young uh, child she has at home. But I said, yes, he did. Um, she said, this is a miracle for me. And I'm so surprised. And she appreciated very much that we have done this effort with him. Um, so uh, in the beginning, we used to have some problems with uh, especially they, they don't understand what can music do. Mm -hmm. But when they see the results and they, they see their communication is getting better, their numbers in the other subjects is getting better, um, especially that we are dealing also in not only music activities, but we try to give them the hard subjects in a kind of a, a, a lovely way mm -hmm. so they can remember the, the things that are hard to study mm -hmm. in, in a better way which make it easier for them. Mm -hmm. So um, when they see the results and they see it's, it's actually there is a change happening, they, they just appreciate it very much and they come to me and we, they say we are so proud of what's going on. Um, go on, please complete. Uh, they just give me like uh, 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 an opportunity to, to, to go more and more. Uh, so this is, is very encouraging for me actually. Now, I'd like to ask, are there cer certain children who need like a type of physiotherapy and is it offered through the school or that's outside the school done? No, because as we said, uh, only the mild disabilities are uh, mm. in the mainstreaming. But uh, if they need some support from a doctor, it has to be outside. The parents do it. They take them to the doctors if they need something like this. But in the school, no. There is only a, a teacher for special needs to give them the support they need for their, um, uh, for their uh, subjects. They are uh, studying in the school, but not more than that. Only this uh, in the school.
to Marwa and the Bruginia syndrome. Now, you mentioned that it's an aging disease. Now, mm. how grave is it? Like, uh, is it only the cells or is it the cells and the body? Would the child die or is it just the looks? Uh, would you tell us a bit more about how severe is such a condition? Uh, it is actually a severe condition and it's affecting all of their body and um, they, unfortunately, they die very young, yes. You've mentioned earlier Marwa and the Bruginia syndrome. Now, how severe is it? Is it just aging of the body or, um, or is it just aging of the facial features? Um, is it a deadly disease? Well, yes, it's a severe disease. Uh, it affects their body, it affects their look, and it affects also their mind, the way they talk. She doesn't talk properly. Uh, and um, unfortunately, yes, they die very young, yes. Now, won't that affect them psychologically, like um, to feel for a child that they are aging fast? Now, do you take courses to how to deal with them? Of course, it affects them in all kind of way. But um, as long as I, I told you, I'm learning now how what are these diseases and where do they come from to give them uh, the better uh, support I can do. So uh, through through the, the the music activities that we do, it gives it builds their self confidence. So she she feels no she she feels herself beautiful when we talk when we take selfies together when we play together. When she have a friendship with other normal children, uh, it's, it's, it's making it less the effect, of course, little by little on her. Um, this is uh, um, one of the, our main goals is to, 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 to blend them together with the normal students and to make also the normal students not afraid from them. They used to be afraid to, even the teachers. One of the teachers told me, um, I really appreciate what's been done in the, in the project. Because in the beginning, when she saw those um, disabled children in the classroom, she was scared to, to, to interfere with them, to come close to them. Um, she said, I, I didn't know what to do. Uh, but then um, when we little by little took their hand and we make the friendship between them, and we make them talk together, spend more time together. Uh, she, she, she's not afraid anymore. Uh, it was a very nice from her to tell me that because this feedback is always, uh, let's say, um, charging my battery to go on and to continue what I'm doing. Even if I have many um, uh, challenges, um, many um, things to, to hold me back, I say, no, if, uh, if, I, if this effect is happening, I have to go on, I have to continue. Wherever it happens, I have to continue. Now, actually, this project has been going on since 2009, but you've been working for years now. Yeah. So would you talk to me about some of the challenges in general that you had, you had to face in your life? In my life? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I love this question. Actually, I think, um, uh, the, the project was born from the challenge that I lived with my daughter. Um, my elder daughter, Yasmin, um, was born with a hairsprung disease. Um, in the outlook, she is a lovely, beautiful girl, uh, but she has a problem with the, her colon. Uh, since uh, she was one year and a half, we have um, noticed that she has this disease. Um, before that, we, we have struggled a lot with many doctors, but no one could ever tell us what's wrong with her. And in her birthday, two years exactly, uh, she had the first operation. Uh, after that, I have lived a lot in hospitals a lot in hospitals and I saw the suffering of the children. I think because of that, because of those memories with children that are struggling in life and um, the pain they are having and still, they still smile and still they have hope and they just, in, sometimes they are coming out of the operation and the next day you see them get up and move um, since then, I have learned that those children have a lot in them, and I wanted to give them a smile in their heart before their face. This actually what made me search for, for giving um, a best 
uh, thing for children to make them smile from their heart. Well, um, well, I hope she's better now. She is, alhamdulillah. She's a lovely girl in the university, and she's very, very strong. And um, no one can ever feel that she has a problem. She is very, very strong little girl. Um, and inshallah, she will have a lovely life. She's uh, learning media, by the way. Wow, <laughs> wonderful. Now, would you talk to us about your family? How many children, sons or daughters do you have? I have Yasmin and Yusuf, a boy and a girl. The Yasmin is the elder girl. Yeah. yeah. Was it challenging for you as a working woman to be a mother and to work at the same time? Of course, yes, of course. But um, I always like to, to put priorities so my 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 children were my first priority and then comes work um, uh, when you are um, organized you can do anything you can do many many things uh, and I like to be organized I've learned that from my father and my mother as I told you um, how to put priorities how to be organized in your day how to plan your day since the, the morning till the end um, this makes a difference this makes you uh, you're, you can manage many things and you can do everything uh, in um, a, a better way and um, in a um, professional way. Travel to many countries. Now, would you talk to me about the country you enjoyed visiting the most? Um, I enjoy visiting all the countries. Every country has something special. Mm. Uh, and I like when I go to a new country to explore it well. So I plan very well before I travel, uh, search very well, what shall I do, what shall I visit, uh, where are the main areas that um, take me because I like to, to look into art museums uh, as i told you i love nature so um, i plan very well before i uh, travel day one we will do one two three day two will do one two three so i enjoy it even if i'm going to uh, a, a little country i just find the joyful part in it and i do it 
uh, I enjoyed Malaysia very much, Kuala Lumpur. I, I enjoyed um, USA, of course. Uh, it's a, it was a dream, actually, to visit. Um, we visited many places there. Uh, we have done a lovely trip uh, throughout Europe by the car. And I enjoyed that very much because even the way that only just moving from one country to another by the car is, mm -hmm. is a very, very joyful thing to do. Mm -hmm. the, the mountains, everything is green, the nature, the clouds, the color of the sky. Um, my eyes enjoy nature. Every single second I, that goes on, I enjoy it. Uh, I don't spend much in uh, shopping because maybe Dubai is giving it all. <laughs> so when I travel, I don't care much about shopping. I, I care much about exploring the, the real culture of the country, um, the, the, the nature, the, um, the museums. I spend a lot of time in museums. Paris, of course, one of the best. Uh, Louvre, to see the Mona Lisa in reality was a dream come true. I wanted to know what was special in her smile and uh, I read about it before I traveled so I knew it was a sad smile that she lost um, a child, she lost her daughter uh, and I knew that um, when you look to her eyes from anywhere you will see that she's looking to you so I had to find it out so I just go to the left and look in her eyes and go to the right and look in her eyes. It, it was true, I, so I had to make sure myself. <laughs> Do you know that uh, here in Egypt, mm -hmm. at the Hanging Church, there is an, uh, an icon? Yeah. And actually, if you look at the eyes of the Holy Virgin also, oh. from whichever direction you'll find that, yes, it's in uh, Coptic Cairo. So if okay. you go there, look at the icon of the Holy Virgin, I, I and you'll find her looking I at you from each side. I explore my country, yes, you yeah. are right. I, I need to time to spend it in my country because I'm missing a lot in Egypt. And it's just a lot lovely country. When I went to the Red Sea, mm -hmm. I saw the, the, the fish and the, the, uh, the corals. It, it's amazing. It's not in any other place in the world. Um, even even uh, when I went to Maldives also. Uh, when I did snorkeling here and in the Red Sea, comparing, no, the Red Sea wins, actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also yeah. UK. UK yeah. is a very... Um, very, you, how, how can I say it? It's a formal country. <laughs> Everything is uh, organized. organized very much. Uh, I love Harrods, but not also for shopping, but the place is amazing. It's very, very nice to visit. Uh, Everything is very, very elegant, uh, glamorous. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's a very nice place to visit also. Um, where else did I go? Uh, Russian, of course, uh, Moscow. Uh, my sister was born there. Uh, there, that is a different experience because, of course, the snow and the snow flags when they when they when it's raining and it's snowing. Uh, I used to enjoy waking up in the morning and looking from the window and to see all all the country is. I feel it. It's like a newborn mm -hmm. when no one has touched the snow. It's like a newborn. Uh, I used to enjoy that very much and I, when I traveled to Germany I, I was seeking the snow. It wasn't that much as uh, in Russian of course, but, but it was okay. It, it gave me some memories back where I enjoyed too. Yes, now I'd like to ask you about your moral in life because we're almost a few minutes away from the yeah. end of this episode. Yeah. Uh, well, many of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like, um, in, from the inspiring of my uh, project, is uh, making people happy. Mm. When you give happiness to others, you gain it back even more. Uh, this is one of my goals in life. Um, I like to, to leave something after I leave life, something that people will remember me with, maybe, maybe also a smile, why not? Uh, so. I like to give. It makes me happy. Uh, when I see people are happy because I did something to them, this is the very main area of happiness to myself. Um, when I see the impact from, from what I'm giving in the, um, in the training sessions that I do, when I, at the end of the training session when I feel that I have given them some spiritual energy, some uh, positive energy to continue with, this makes me very, very happy. Um, 
well, these are the main things I can remember now. Finally, I'd like to ask you, what's your dream? Uh, my dream, the first thing is peace for all the world. Um, I would love to live in a peaceful life where everybody is happy, everybody is smiling, um, everybody is loving each other and happy for each other's success. Um, f and uh, in a special way for my project, as I said uh, uh, in our interview, to, to give the, the smile for every child who needs it all over the world, to spread this, um, these goals and these uh, achievements that we got from the project for every child who needs it. And for my children, of course, um, to see them uh, the best children, as all of us mothers dream. Um, these are the main things I would love to, to feel, inshallah, throughout my world. Well, I hope all your dreams come true. Thank you. Thank you very much for this interview. Thank you for the efforts you're exerting to help children with special needs. Thank you. And unfortunately, by this, <laughs> we come to an end of this episode. And I have to thank you very much for this interview. Thanks to you and thanks for all the team. It was a very, very nice interview. And I hope we will see you again. <laughs> Hopefully we will. Hopefully when you're back again here in Egypt, we certainly will meet thanks again. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, that was special needs specialist Mrs. Hanan al -Attar. In this episode, we've learned about some of the challenges she faced, whether in her career or in her personal life. We've learned also about her dreams, her ambitions, the countries which she enjoyed visiting the most. And by this, we come to an end of this episode of Story of Success. Until we meet again with another Egyptian successful figure, it's goodbye.